We just wrapped at NAB 2024 and we are pumped to be back home in the studio. And I say studio, but I actually mean our virtual production wall. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> so in this video, we're gonna be going over all of the major takeaways in virtual production from NAB 2024. We're gonna be covering LED walls, we're gonna be covering cameras, we're gonna be covering motion tracking, and we're gonna be covering some voodoo, magic, crazy stuff that I don't really know how to explain. What I'm really talking about is processors and like two-in-one shot type situation stuff, but it is voodoo magic. So we're gonna talk about that at the end of this video. First up, let's talk LED walls. So I gotta say, pretty much every single booth at NAV this year had an LED wall. It didn't matter if you were selling LED walls or if you were selling boom mics, you had an LED wall. It was really funny to see the evolution of like, I remember three years ago, there was like one and people were like, Oh my God, look at this, this is crazy. Have you seen this before? And now everyone's like, yeah, it's an LED wall because I need to display my headphones that I'm selling. Makes sense. That being said, I have three major standouts that we have to talk about. Number one being Row Visuals. Now obviously Row has been one of the major leaders in tile manufacturing since virtual production began. They're actually the tiles that were used on the Mandalorian. At the Row booth this year and just recently announced last week, Row showed off Row Obsidian. Now I could just go off the top of my head, but uh, I've got a press release, so let's uh, let's read that. This wall is a semi-permanent to permanent installation. The panel's reinforced frame design allows for the removal of LED modules at any time, facilitating the creation of access holes for additional equipment like lights. The LED structure can be extended with an access platform of adjustable height to create easy access for technicians who need to work on the volume. This panel features a 2.6 millimeter pixel pitch, deep black masking, and 2500 nit brightness. It uses 50% less power than a traditional LED panel at the same brightness according to Row. In addition, it's slightly waterproof, which is a little wild. My wife's calling me. Hello, sorry, I just started recording. I know, but uh, then I started recording. I'm so sorry. Talk to you later. Love you. <laughs> Nice lady. Obviously, we here at Copilot love row. This is a row LED wall. But it was really awesome to be shown around the booth. They had two different types of panels in their main little demo setup. The main wall was the new Obsidian RGBA panel, and the top wall had RGBW technology with Brompton's True Light, which we've made a video on. If you guys are wondering what that's all about, you can click on it right up here. Here? Here. Boop. Yeah. That one. Cole's Notes version of RGBW, because it introduces white into the RGB, gives off a more realistic skin tone, which is why it's often used for ceiling panels like in the Rode demo. Number two, we're gonna move over to Kino Flow, who are showing off their new Mimic Light. Now you might be wondering why we're talking about a lighting company, but this is essentially an LED panel, but in LED lighting form. Now these Mimics were shown off last year in 2023, but basically they came back and showed us a demo where they're controlling the Mimics and effects of an LED volume with the Mimic. And in this particular case, the Mimics weren't only mimicking what was happening on the entire volume, but they're also acting as the effects grids for the lightning. They're also extremely thin. If you can see this little side profile that I have here, which is impressive and easy for mounting. As of right now, I believe the Mimic is only powered by Megapixel VR. Number three, we're gonna talk about QTC. Now this brand specifically focuses on making LED panels that are good for lighting on set, which is obviously important. They make these matte panels that don't really reflect light very much. They're actually right next to the window of the convention center, and I couldn't see any of the daylight raking against the panel itself. They're also telling me that the entire panel acts as a heat sink, so it distributes the heat across the entirety of the panel, which will supposedly bring down energy cost. My honorable mention in the LED section goes to Neodi, who showed off their panels to us that can be flush against a wall. That is super interesting. Next, we're gonna be moving into motion tracking systems, some innovation, some new stuff we saw, and just some highlights of some cool stuff. Now, if you don't know, in virtual production, motion tracking is essentially the key that makes it all possible. Without it, you wouldn't be able to achieve the parallax effect on a wall or a green screen or essentially 
anything that you're using. We're gonna start at Moses. As you guys know, we love Moses. We use the Moses Star Tracker and Star Tracker Max. The Moses booth this year, which had an LED wall. This time they were showing off the Max's capabilities on a massive bowed slider. They had a dancer at one point, then they had a speaker. The slider was automated, which is another thing that Moses also does. If you haven't seen our first impressions video on the Star Tracker Max, you can check it out right here. Yeah, here. I have a screen right over there that's telling me which, which side I'm pointing to. We're not done with Moses yet. You remember at the start of the video when I talked about some voodoo magic? Moses is one of the two companies that I'm going to mention that did something that kind of blows my mind. I'm excited to show you guys at the end of the video. And of course, if you want to skip to the voodoo magic stuff, every single section of this video has been chaptered off for your ease of use. Like and subscribe. Stipe's booth, which both had green screen and, you guessed it, an LED wall, was showing off their Red Spy technology as well as the Red Spy on one of the big cranes that they can build. And fun fact, the Red Spy is actually used to motion track shots in the NBA, and I just found out from them at their booth that the highest point that they ever had to track was in one of those recent installs, which was 110 feet above the tracker, which is insanely impressive. Also showed a live key with their jib on the green screen, which was very cool to see. And finally in motion tracking, we're gonna kind of bump down a few levels of expensive and go to HTC, who are showing off their Mars system to us. And quickly, before we get into it, shout out to Tim at HTC, a good friend of ours. Love you, dude. So what's the Mars all about? Well, basically this is an every man's tracking system. It's super easy to set up. He showed us how to calibrate it, how to use it on a green screen, how the grid lays out so you can kind of adjust it perfectly. Then they also showed this camera pull system that they have as well as a live remote. Look at Tim running. This thing works from like, I don't know, a hundred feet away. Don't quote me on that, but far away. And the focus pulling motors as well as the focus pulling module combined were only $700. Kept saying to Tim, this is like almost at the point where you could do like a one man band virtual production setup. It was fun to see. All right, let's move on to the fast and fancy. Let's get into cameras and lenses and camera accessories. Blackmagic has released their newest lines of Ursas, including the ridiculously overspec 17K. Yes, you heard that right, 17K. Who are we making movies for now? People on Mars? Do they need to see the most crisp revolution, resolution, resolution? Do they need, do they need that? Elon. Now, why are we talking about the Ursa when we're talking about VP? Well, because the Ursa uses global shutter, which is preferred for us shooters in virtual production. Ursa also has multiple mounts. So depending on the solution that you need for camera calibration, you can use like an A mount. You can use an EF mount. You can use a PL mount. You can use whatever you need. Also, my only former gripe with the Ursa that we're shooting on right now is that the out of the box monitoring system is uh, not good. It's not good. You've always needed a secondary monitor. Make sure that what you're shooting is in focus. Even when you zoom in, it's like kind of not great. But with the new Ursas, there are two super high end screens. One is on your operator side and one is on the dumb side of the camera, which is a little bit weird. The dumb side of the camera being the side that the operator does not use where you can usually rig things. Now, you know, the client or whoever, the AC, I guess, if you want to pull focus beside it, can see what you're shooting which is gonna be interesting for rigging, but I'm sure we'll find a workaround. Anyway, another camera that was featured all over the show floor this week was the Red Komodo because of its capability for ghost frame, which if you're wondering what that is, that is voodoo magic number two. We'll talk about that later in the video. Stay tuned. Now let's get into lenses, and I'm only gonna talk about one brand, that is Atlas. Atlas's booth, the only reason why I'm mentioning Atlas's booth is because of their amazing hands-on demo, as well as the actors at their booth for like four days, always doing actions, showing off the anamorphic flares with little flashlights. It was fun, kind of annoying sometimes when I'm just trying to focus on something and then I see like a flare come in, it's because a girl is like holding a little, she's like, yeah, you like that uh, flare? Ka -ch -ka -ch. We've always loved the way that anamorphic lenses look on an LED wall. Obviously, there's some problem with lens calibration, but I hear that a certain company that's actually not Atlas is coming up with a solution to that. And also, uh, they got uh, they got great merch. They, ooh, this is, 
Yeah, they got great merch. Look at that. Love it. I've been wearing this hat like ever since I got it. Thank you so much to the person who gave me this. And also maybe, maybe, uh, maybe we're gonna be taking the Atlas for out for a spin. Maybe we're gonna be, you know, putting up, putting up a nice demo lens against this sweet a stage a stage that we have maybe we have access to yeah, maybe maybe who knows we'll see soon but. and in the final spot of the camera department i have an accessory to a camera which is this mega new camera arm from the company zinema and of course because it's nab they had an led wall at their stage they just announced the last of three sizes of their new camera so they got the small one that's like for six pounds they have the medium which was th for 13 pounds and my only gripe with them was that they didn't have a heavy enough load and now their new one is 25 pounds which is great uh, i mean i guess their stage and this presentation it wasn't really about virtual production but it was on an led wall they're connected to unreal engine so they were using virtual production sure yeah it's time the voodoo magic processors and processing crazy stuff. Caveat alert, <laughs> alert, okay? I don't fully know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. I will be the first to admit. Correct me in the comments. I know that there will be corrections, but I am just trying to display the information that was given to me. All right, you ready? Here we go, voodoo, boom. Number one, we got ghost frames. We've already talked about it. I mentioned it before. What is it? Well, it works with red cameras and basically it's a way of dividing subframes so that you can have two different environments or as many as you want, but let's say two and you can process that through the same shot from one camera. Whoa, let's, let's break it down. All right, this isn't entirely correct the way that I'm about to do it, but just for you and for me, pretend that we're talking about subframes. You've got green screen, and then you've got a background through this camera, same camera, okay? Understood, we're all good. Green takes up frames one, three, five, seven. The other background takes on frame two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, so on, so on, so on. And they switch so quickly that it just looks like they're both sitting on the frame at the same time. Then because of the capability of the red camera, both of those outputs can be processed and divided into two separate outputs. So you have one that is fully on green and one that is fully on your LED background and here's the crazy part with the Kino flow mimic you can actually change lighting in real time but to the naked eye you will not see the change because it's happening in subframes there's a ton of other capabilities with this with like multicam and a bunch of other stuff it all came out last year at nab but like we're just redisplaying really cool stuff because people like me and you don't fully understand it. i mean you probably understand it you're probably gonna tell me wrong in the comments but that's totally fine my brain exploded that's just the way it was all right voodoo part one done part two starts now i wrote this part down because because I don't fully, um, you know, know what's going on. Osis has a new AI tool that's going to help multicam productions called Mo Viewer. You've got a multicam live production. You got one camera here, one camera here. They're both shooting the same subject. The only problem with this on virtual production is whichever camera is live will show its relative background in its frustum. So the director of the broadcast wants to see what he's switching to, but he can't because he can only see the frustum of the first camera, not the switched to camera. There's a way around this with MoViewer where it uses AI to composite what that shot should look like so that you have your real view and then your AI view of your second shot. So as a director, you can see and anticipate what shot you are switching to. And I think that's about as good of an explanation as I'm gonna give you, but I'm gonna link it below and I'm gonna link everything else below. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Post your comments below of your favorite things that you saw at the convention last week. Also, subscribe to this channel. We do LED virtual production. We have a ton of fun here. So don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and now you're gonna see some bloopers of me losing my mind. I'm tired, I'm going to bed, so see you later. But no, seriously, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. I did like 70,000 steps in the last three days. I'm exhausted, I just got off of a plane, but I knew that we needed to come to you and give you, all what am I saying, dude? I'm so tired, I'm just gonna, you know. I hope you guys enjoy. Also, also, subscribe to this channel. We do a bunch of virtual, we do a bunch of virtual. Also, subscribe to this channel. We do virtual production. We do.